Johnny, local losers, um, and Levi. He's important also. He's the president. He's the one that takes care of everything. He's the money maker. Anyway, we're here with the Volvo today. Today we're going to talk about some wiring. We've got a Mega Squirt 2 going in here, so we're going to do a little bit of wiring on that and talk about what our plans are with it. So I've got a Mega Squirt 2 for the Volvo. It says Mega Squirt 2. 357-C. I had to take the the connector apart. It was built by somebody else, so I didn't know what all the all the different colors of wires were going to. So I had to come down here and label them. I've got them labeled and all laid out. Um, this one goes on my distributor. This is a temperature sensor, TPS, uh, air intake temperature, power wires over here, and these are my injector connectors. Luckily, I didn't have to make any of these connectors because this uh, harness was already made by my buddy Alex. He had this box in a different Volvo and he was going to put it in this Volvo before I bought the chassis from him. Bo thinks he can wire stuff up. Luckily, this is basically plug and play at this point. Hey, I'm new to it, but I'm learning and I'm, uh, I feel like I'm getting really good at it. I made the injector wires to my uh, RX-7, wiring up my Haltech E8. It's coming out really good. All right, so to figure out all the wires for this, where they go on the on the ECU and the, uh, each pin, I, I had a diagram. We're going to show that right here on the video. Probably right here, or right here, or somewhere around in here. We're going to show the diagram that I used to figure out all this wiring. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to lay the harness out across the engine and figure out the way to best run it through the bay so we don't have wires just going everywhere. Make sure everything's the right length and everything's going to get to where it goes. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that it's probably going to be set up, this harness is probably going to be set up pretty well because it was made for this engine and for this car. Bo likes things to look a little cleaner than I do. I just kind of like put it together and hope it works, even if it's just for five minutes. Here, look at it real quick. Jeez Louise. Looking through the harness, I was kind of learning a lot about what all sensors you had to hook up, what all sensors you needed to run the Mega Squirt. Um, apparently, where'd it go? Uh, air intake temperature is one that you definitely need. Throttle position sensor is one you need. Um, coolant temperature sensor is one you need. O2 sensor. Uh, that's one thing we don't have wired up on this yet, is a wideband. You need a wideband for tuning, but you also need an O2 sensor for running any kind of standalone. Um, usually a wideband, AEM, Uego, or Innovate, or anything like that will have enough wires on it so that you can run... Your narrow band to the ECU, right? Right. You can run narrow band to the ECU, and you can use the wideband to tune to your uh, like wideband AFR gauge. Uh, what did I not name? Some ECUs will have like a knock sensor input, so um, it will automatically retard timing or increase fuel or whatever it does to... to uh, solve the knock issue. Yeah, solve the knock issue. You're talking really quiet. I do that all the time. Don't do that. <laughs> These videos, Don't I don't need to that. work on it. Anyways, yeah. knock sensor, it's optional but recommended. If, you're, if your engine has a knock sensor and your ECU has the capabilities of running one, highly recommend running one because it'll save you on a hot day or if you get a batch of bad gas, anything like that, it'll really save your butt and keep you driving and let you have an engine at the end of the day. Uh, oh, you also need some sort of crank position sensor, uh, some sort of trigger, some sort of trigger to uh, activate the ignition when it needs to go off. Uh, I have this one plug that goes on the side of my distributor. I'm not exactly sure what kind of sensor that is in there, but... Um, on the RX-7, it is a it has a, a trigger wheel on the crank, 
and it uh, has like one tooth. It has two sensors that come that that come up against the trigger wheel, and it's got one tooth that sticks off the top, and then it has a bunch of teeth on the inside. And where one sensor reads the home tooth, which is the single tooth, the other sensor reads all the individual teeth. What else? I said TPS, um, AIT, map, O2, oh, map. Uh, with the Mega Squirt, the map sensor is built into the box. So what's a map sensor? Uh, map what's sensor what's is, map? A, is a manifold air pressure sensor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Ronnie is going to explain what a <laughs> map sensor is real quick. So map is manifold absolute pressure, and it reads inside your manifold. Really good for like safety reasons because it's not reading the metered air that's coming into the engine like a uh, a MAF would, which is a um, what's MAF stand for? Mass airflow. Yeah, mass airflow. Yeah, that's what it stands for. Um, so if a car is running like a full vent to atmosphere blow off valve, and you have a MAF system. The car will hit a lean spot or a rich spot, depending on how the car's tuned. I believe it's a, a rich spot. And uh, it's just not good for the engine. But when you have a MAPS sensor, it reads actually what's going into the engine. And as long as you don't have a vacuum leak pre-throttle um, body, as long or after your throttle body, as long as it's pre-throttle body, the car will still run fairly okay. If it's after that, the car will stumble because it'll be either getting or losing air. Map, you don't get as good fuel mileage, but it's easier to tune, it's easier to work with, and you have less reliability issues. You don't have to worry about a dirty sensor because it's just reading air pressure. That all sounds reasonable to me, so I concur. <laughs> so this is basically my workbench, the floor. This is where I'm building the harness and uh, making the connectors for the Haltec for the RX-7. On the RX-7 harness, the connectors for the injectors are very different from the ones on the Volvo harness. So I had to swap the connectors uh, that were on the harness with these uh, injector dynamics connectors. I was thinking that it would be better to solder them at first and I started soldering them and and Ronnie came over and he was like you're dumb and you should be crimping them and I didn't think that was the case but I did some googling, did some reading and as it turns out it's better to crimp than to solder. Isn't that right? That's right. When you're soldering wires, um, a lot of times the wires tend to get overheated and they'll get really stiff and you have to worry about what, what I guess the industry calls wire fatigue. Um, with crimping, uh, you crimp the wire and the wire is able to move about a little bit inside the crimp connector and as we showed you in the um, the lighting video for the F-150, there are these really new there <laughs> they're really new neat connectors. There are these really cool new um, crimp connectors that you can get that have heat shrink already on them. So you crimp the connector and then you just use a heat gun and it heat shrinks and everything. They're kind of perfect. You get them on Amazon. So Amazon sponsor us. Since Ronnie has had so much good luck with Amazon. Um, don't take his word for it. Dude, just buy it off Amazon. But I'm also going to say, uh, we got them off Amazon, so get them off Amazon. <laughs> I can trust you, but not me. <laughs> oh, you got it. So, this is the expandable braided sleeve that I'm using for the harness. Um, I'm using it for my RX-7, and I'm using it for the Volvo. Uh, I really like it. It's super cool. It's it's not very expensive. It kind of would you move your hand, Derek? No, no look, hey. now it's focused elsewhere. So it. <laughs> <laughs> I just like doing this into the camera. I don't know why. It feels cool and it looks funny. Anyways, as you push it down, it expands, and then when you go to stretch your wire out, it uh, closes around it like a Chinese finger trap. It's pretty neat. But this is what I use for all my harnesses. I can't stop doing this. Right, stop. I like it a lot. Shut I don't up. like seeing you play with your little thing. <laughs> anyway, I got it. it comes on huge rolls. Uh, it comes in different sizes. It's small, and it's big, and it's bigger, and I'm sure they're smaller. Did you get it on Amazon? 
Interestingly enough, I did get it on Amazon. We, I, my face isn't in this shot, mm. but we go to Amazon <laughs> for almost everything because it's inexpensive, and we get it in like two days. So when I was doing research on the internet, Ronnie's over here talking about my legs. Um, so I was doing research on the internet, uh, trying to figure out look, show your legs versus. Man, look at them. Aren't they good looking? Hmm. Mega squared. Um, for this uh, B230 specifically, uh, when you turbo it and put it into a Volvo, um, what I want to say is I found most of my information on DIY Auto Tune. Uh, they have a lot of Mega Squirt support. They have wiring diagrams. They have um, fuel and ignition maps. Not even including that they sell everything you need exactly. for Mega Squirt systems. They sell injectors. They sell all the sensors, connectors. They sell the Mega Squirt boxes. Trigger wheels. If you need a trigger uh, yeah, wheel. For trigger your car. wheels, like custom trigger wheels. I also found a lot of information on msextra.com, which I guess stands for Mega Squirt Extra.com. Um, just tons of information out there. Um, I need to stay up, stop saying uh so much. Uh. Uh, uh. Also, on Google <laughs> Images, I found a bunch of fuel and ignition maps, which are really useful when you want to create a base map for just to get your car cranked. One of the great things about using a standalone ECU is that it doesn't take a lot of wires to get to all your sensors and run your car, things like that. So, um, basically, when you come through the fire, if your ECU is in the car and you come through the firewall, you can pretty much run it right behind the engine, and all your necessary wires can run through the pieces of the engine. So, if you look at his injector wires, he ran them up through the center of his intake manifold to just keep them cleaner. You can't see it. The wire comes out right here, it runs behind the engine, and then it kind of drops down and disappears. And don't worry about all that. That's all other crap. Like, those wires aren't even hooked up to anything. But... They're, they're pretty simple and short, and you're able to keep them all up under the top of the engine, underneath everything, and it just makes it look a lot cleaner. So this is the intercooler off the hard body. This is what is going on here. We used it on the hard body, worked really good. Ended up going to a bigger intercooler on the hard body for no reason. Here, play your... What? Play your That's how you play an intercooler, right? <laughs> I don't know. Mighty Car Mods pretends that they're uh, harps. What? Yeah. That's weird. I play it like a trumpet. <laughs> and now you play trumpets? <laughs> it seems to be in tune, so that's good. Anyways, for the little amount of boost that this car's going to run, this should be just fine. There's this much left to do, was actually what I was going to say. There really isn't a whole lot left to do. Um, you saw the intercooler earlier. We got to put that on, pipe that up. Um, we've got to put a turbo manifold on it, which we're probably going to get made by one of our fabulous fabricators here in Sierra Vista or Tucson. We got to put the turbo on it, run the oil lines. I have something to talk to you about. He has something to talk to me about. Um, finish wiring up the Mega Squirt. Basically, run power to it. Uh, Put the ground and hook everything up. Yeah. We gotta get a bung for your intake air temperature sensor. That's right. Bung for the air intake bung <laughs> for the intake air temperature sensor. Um, after we get the turbo manifold on and the turbo on, we'll have to get an exhaust made, a downpipe with a wide, wide band. band bung. Probably bleed the brakes. Make sure those work. Yeah, then we'll you know, we'll take it to stage zero at that point. Uh, after a shakedown drive. Um, Try and catch it on fire? Yeah, we'll see if we can catch it on fire like Ronnie's truck. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> well, that's about how. Whoa. <laughs> uh, that's about where we are on the Volvo. Um, we got a little more work to do. Not too much, but. Hopefully it'll be running about the same time the RX-7 is running in like 10 years. 10 years. So if you guys subscribe today, in 10 years you'll be able to see those two cars running. Between now and then, we'll probably try to crash the hard body at least twice <laughs> to keep you guys entertained. <laughs> right on. So uh, 
Tune in for our next Volvo video, our next RX-7 video, hard body video, fun truck video. We have a lot of work to do. Yeah, what will we do next? We don't even know. <laughs> we don't know. It's Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? It's like a ghost. Oh, look, there he is. All right, we're done for today. Bye. Later.